Let's get into it. We are making a cocktail today, not called the War Day, but called the War Day. Now, what exactly is a War Day? I have an answer. War Day is slang for starts off as weekday. It eventually got sort of changed, sort of found its way into being a, a happy hour. So if you're having a war day drink, you're having a happy hour drink. To put it to the kids, because I know a little bit of slang from the kids, if the Rizzler is no cap doing too much and your gat right now is so Ohio, so Ohio that it's on God's skibbity, maybe it's time you have a war day. I had to learn a lot of new slang for that. I didn't know what skibbity or Ohio. I, I, had, I had some friends tell me what a gat was a little bit ago. Uh, uh, Debbie is needing me to translate. No, I cannot translate that. I say we just skip all the other part and get right into the war day. Please don't ask me to ever repeat any of those words. I don't know what I just said. I kind of just crossed my eyes and started talking. <laughs> We're gonna be stirring this cocktail. This cocktail is all booze, so don't worry too much about any kind of shaking. In fact, don't shake. You could, if you want to, in this cocktail, start with a little Calvados. That's fine, that's a fine way to do it. However, I usually have Calvados. Today, I don't. We're gonna have Calvados's American brother, and that is this guy right here, Applejack. Applejack is so fun. Anytime a drink calls for brandy, and you wanna give it a little Gosh, I wish there was a cool word for that that I learned today. I didn't really do much else today but sit on TikTok and learn words. If you have a cocktail that's asking for brandy and you want to add a little riz, switch it out for apple brandy. It just gives a little bit more like pizzazz. It brings a little bit of that apple flavor out of nowhere. So find yourself an apple brandy, either a Calvados or an Applejack, and you need one ounce of that. <sighs> Feeling real Ohio right now. I don't know what it means. Can somebody look up what that means? What I'm saying when I say something is Ohio? Apparently it's a slang word. Next thing you're gonna put in here is going to be some gin. If you're gonna switch it out for a vodka, don't do a big flavored vodka. Do a very nice dry vodka. Don't, just don't find any, any sweet flavors, but uh, grab yourself some gin. How much? One ounce. So one ounce of some dry gin. I love that sound when it's a new bottle and all the bubbles are trying to escape and they go any kind of nice sweet vermouth is going to work in here you want something that you like though because it is going to be one third of the flavors so find yourself a sweet red italian vermouth it's kind of a redundancy when you say sweet vermouth you're almost always talking about red vermouth when you're talking about red vermouth you're almost always talking about sweet vermouth and when you're talking about italian vermouth you're almost always talking about a sweet red vermouth find yourself an italian style vermouth and we need one ounce of some Italian style vermouth. Ohio, adjective to mean boring wasteland. <laughs> that was tough. Poor Ohio. <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeesh. We need a little flavor in this. Apparently, just a little bit of spice in this. Currently, Americans and the rest of the world is having an issue with a religious foreign group, a foreign group of religious zealots. And those are the monks that make chartreuse. Apparently, these guys have decided, okay, we're just going to sit in silence and pray, and we're not going to make your delicious, delicious Jinnipi booze. It seems selfish to me. So if you are uh, not able to find any chartreuse, let me give you a very nice alternative. This is French. This is Italian. This is called Strega. It is not the exact same thing, okay? I don't want to hear all the garbage about how there's more anise in this and it's more, you know, more herbs in this. I don't care. I'm telling you, if you cannot find this stuff, this stuff is just fine. It's better to make the cocktail with anything at all than to sit there sober as a monk. What if you become a monk and you stop making things? It's dangerous. So if you can't find any of this, get some of this. And you'll be fine. But today, I do have this. Yellow chartreuse is green chartreuse's smaller brother. Or smaller only in alcohol by volume. This one comes in at 43%. We just want to dash. I'm going to put my thumb over this. And we're just going to 
Do a little dash. Let me get that. We need one dash of some yellow chartreuse. That's it. I know it seems crazy to go out and buy a whole bottle of yellow chartreuse just for a dash. So don't. Get some Strega instead. That's the cocktail. That's what we got. Let's grab a little ice. That's the way to do it. Take your spoon and we're gonna push and pull until it starts to spin. Really, we're just making the ice dizzy and confused. We don't want this ice to know where it's been, how it got there. Perfect. It's giving dizzy. We got a nice frosty Marie Antoinette glass. We are going to filter this in. Great looking cocktail. It's got that real good cocktail look. It's Cocktail Brown. I like my name fine, I guess, but if my name was Cocktail Brown, I would solve crimes. That's what we're looking for. We do want to put on a little bit of a garnish. You really want to use one of these instead of a knife. This thing is going to just give you a much thinner cut and it's going to give you more to play with. So normally I don't recommend these guys. These things cut and hurt. But if you're doing an intricate garnish, then this is the way you want to go. We're going to pull this straight across. We want to give this just so that it's somewhat straight. We don't need it to be super thin. Thick. Then we're just going to cut this in half almost all the way. So we're going to stop with about that much left. We're going to take this. We're going to loop these together so that we have this lovely little heart. So we have to grab a couple stickers. We're going to stick it through here and here. Then we're going to stick it through here and here till we get this kind of cool looking situation. We're going to drink here. Put this in through there. And there you have it. Ta-da! Freaking hearts! Let's give this a little sip -a <sighs> Awesome. This is delicious. We need more of these. Bartenders really, really dig it when cocktails come in equal parts. One, one, one always makes it easier for people to remember how those are going. So if you're behind a bar and you want to make really nice cocktails, but you got to go really quick, it's really nice to have one, 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 all equal parts. You don't have to uh, switch your jigger or you don't have to switch your pour count. You don't have to switch anything. You can get it out quickly. That's what this is kind of doing. It's a lot of big flavors, but all in equal parts, obviously, except for the chartreuse. I do want to say the chartreuse is present, but it's not such a big part of this cocktail that Strega wouldn't work, especially for a cocktail like this. You don't need, your, like the kids say, that's Ohio. You're doing too much on God. Rizzler, no cap. That's what, we, that's what we have. Okay, that's it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was the uh, the war day. If you have to think about it, about how to pronounce it, think about not like war, but like bar. Think about like bar day. It's war day. War day cocktail. That's it. Until next time, let's say... Uh, don't say that. Until next time, let me say... Bye-bye. Bye-bye.